Hi, welcome to uh, the second lecture in MA342 topology. Um, today, I'm actually going to talk, this is one of the few lectures that I'm going to talk about which isn't covered in the, the book. I thought that uh, yeah, Monday's lecture was an introduction to topology and this is still a, an introduction to topology to give you a flavour and I thought what I'd do today is do some what's called research-led teaching. So I'm going to talk about a research article which uses topology. So normally in pure maths it's almost impossible at a third year undergraduate level to talk about research articles because there's just so many words and so many concepts that you don't have. But um, topology in the last kind of decade or two has been uh, used more and more by applied researchers, applied mathematicians and so on, and when things get more applied uh, they become more interdisciplinary and easier to talk about. So what I'm going to talk about is this paper, which I will bring onto your screen now, it's the paper called Target Enumeration via Euler Characteristic Integral. So at least we see Euler, Euler Characteristic there. And um, two things to note. First of all, uh, the authors are Yuri Baryshnikov, who's from Bell Labs. I think he's the head of maths in Bell Labs. So that's something interesting. He's not working in a university. He's working in a commercial, you know, Bell Labs. Um, and Robert Greist, the University of Pennsylvania. I think he's a professor of electronic engineering. Um, and I'm going to talk about this target enumeration. Um, and one other thing to note, which concerns me a little bit about this paper, so I'll note it now, is that when you see at the footnotes, um, uh, this work was supported by DARPA, the sort of the number. So they had a research grant from DARPA. Well, DARPA is the, def it's the American Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. So it's actually funded by the military. It's called defense, but the difference between defense and offense is, well, I don't know. So, so when, when they talk about target enumeration, uh, I could well imagine that the people in the defense forces um, supporting this think of targets as members of the axis of evil, whatever they are, people wearing face masks. Well, no, not face masks anymore because they're all the world. But a year or so ago, anybody wearing a face mask was in the axis of evil. Now everybody wears a face mask, but whatever. Um, yeah, so I'm not going to talk about killing and axis of evil and so on. I'm going to phrase it in terms of farming. So um, I'm going to explain their problem, but instead of uh, shooting your enemies, I'm going to talk about counting cows and so on. Yeah, so that's that's what I'm going to talk about today. Let me start by by saying that this is the. I talked about the first problem uh, yesterday or Monday was counting pentagons on a football. So this is a second problem. Um, let me write that down. A second problem. What I'm going to talk about all day. And as I say, it's a problem uh, that was uh, studied by Yuri Baryshnikov and Robert Greist. So, I've written out in words uh, my version of the problem, uh, and let me just read out the problem, and then I'll write it. Well, I'll, let me let me read it. Imagine that you're a farmer. Now, for this to be realistic, I don't think I can take a Connemara farmer because Connemara farms are a bit too kind of small. So I'm going to take a Texas farmer. Uh, so a Texas farmer. I'm going to be. I've never been to Texas, and I don't really know. But I imagine that the farms there, the ranches, are enormous. So a Texas farmer. Um, invests in thousands of cheap sensors. What does that mean? Invests in thousands of cheap sensors. So what on earth is a sensor? Well, a sensor is maybe something that Bell Labs could, could manufacture. Um, a sensor it's not particularly well defined, but a sensor is something, I suppose it's electronic, it's cheap. The important thing about a sensor is it's cheap. It's not a sophisticated laptop or a, or a mobile phone, a hand, you know, mobile phone. It's a cheap piece of electronics. It's so cheap, it costs a dollar or a euro or whatever, um, 
that you can buy thousands or millions of them. I mean, the Defense Force could buy a million sensors and drop them from an airplane all over, you know. So they're cheap. You can have lots of them. And because they're cheap, they don't have a lot of functionality. They can only do very simple things. Maybe a sensor can detect movement. And that's it. You know, it's, it's the, the cheapest kind of piece of electronics you can imagine. It, it can do one thing, detect some movement or detect sight or whatever. Uh, and also it can relay what it sees. So if it detects movement, it can somehow relay it. Maybe if you have lots of sensors covering an area on a Texas farm, maybe one sensor can detect movement or see something. And it can also communicate just to its nearest neighbor. It has a very cheap kind of, you know, it has a, a Bluetooth or something. It can connect to its nearest neighbor. And from its nearest neighbor, that nearest neighbor can connect to the nearest neighbor. And, and messages can, can emanate from, from a sensor. So it can do a, a simple operation and it can somehow transmit the answer to wherever you want. That's what a sensor is. So a farmer invests in thousands of these and spreads them all over the ranch. They're so cheap that he can just spread them. He, he hires an aeroplane and the aeroplane, you know, I'm thinking of the military now, the aeroplane just chucks them out and spreads them all over the ranch. Uh, and spreads them all over the ranch. Um, now, the farmer just sits drinking tea at the farmhouse. Um, when activated from the farmhouse, so the farmer can press a button and say activate, and he activates all of these sensors. Your know, message gets sent from the farmers, spreads throughout the network of sensors, and every sensor is activated. So when activated from the farmhouse, what does a sensor do? A sensor counts the number of cows within a certain distance of it. That's all it is. Let me change colour. When activated, by the farmer drinking tea in the farmhouse, from the farmhouse. Um, a sensor counts the number of cows within a certain distance. It says, how many cows can I see? The, the, so it counts the number of cows, uh, cattle, whatever, cows within a certain distance. Let's say that distance is R. See. Why within a certain distance? Well, these sensors are cheap and they can only see 100 meters or, or uh, you know, 500 meters, whatever. They're fairly cheap. They can only see 100 meters, so they can see everything within a, in a radius of 100 meters. Well, not only that, they can't see through brick walls and they can't see through uh, farm buildings or mountains. So they can see anything within line of sight. So a certain distance and within line of sight, they can't see through stone walls can't see through trees or whatever, and within line of sight. Okay, so now when it's been activated, a sensor goes bing and it sees how many cows there are that it can see. And what does it do? The number of the sensor and the number of cows is just returned to the farmhouse. It sends off the message, four cows and my number is A1293. It sends that back to the farmhouse. So, um, the number of cows well maybe it isn't cows but moving objects or objects the size of a cow whatever the number of animals whatever and the sensor ID um, is returned to the farmhouse So the farmer presses go and then with instantaneously she or he gets back all these numbers, you know, from whatever, 10,000 sensors on the farm. This sensor sees 20 cows, this sensor sees 5 cows, this sensor sees 9 cows, that one sees 3 cows, this one doesn't see any cows. All over. Now the farmer knows where the sensors are because he's placed them, or she has placed them there. 
Um, but uh, gets all this information back. So the question now that I want to address is how can the farmer determine the number of cows on the ranch from this data? Yeah, that's the question. How can the farmer determine the number of cows uh, on the ranch from this data. Now, okay, that's a very artificial problem. I've made it up uh, because I didn't want to talk about insurgents from the axis of evil who we want to identify and count how many terrorists there are or whatever. Um, but you can think of maybe, maybe there are better. I mean, if you don't like cows, you could think of uh, the number of anglers on Loch Corrib and maybe the Corrib Angling Association buy so many sensors and place them all over the lake. And, you know, you, you, can, you can vary the, the problem um, to your heart's content. I'll stick with cows. OK, so that's the, that's the question. Any, any, any feedback, any questions for me so far? Does everybody understand what I'm on about? No, no response at all. Can anybody say yes, I understand, or no, I don't? All good. Okay, that's good. I, I know that somebody's alive there. Okay. So, well, I now took, before, com before switching on, I, I started drawing with my graphics tablet. So, here's a drawing that I made. There's a drawing. So, what's that a drawing of? Can anybody tell me in the chat what's that a drawing of? <laughs> Nobody can. I wouldn't expect you to be able to. What I've drawn here is a, a butterfly. No, no, it's a cow. It's a cow, actually. It's not Shrek. It's a cow, and it's not a butterfly. This dot here in the middle, the black dot, is my cow. It's a point cow. Let me write it up over here. Um, a point cow. Yeah, I'm going to represent my cow as a point. Well, it can be detected by all sensors within a radius, you know, which are not, which in a distance are from it, which can see it in line of sight. So the ranch is covered with sensors, but there are some obstacles. These grey things that are drawn here, the grey things are, I don't know what they are, they're big boulders or they're farm buildings or they're mountains or something. So sensors can't see through the grey things, they're all obstacles. But the sensors are covering the, the, the green part of the ranch, green for grass, I suppose, or whatever. Um, so any sensor in the green part is in line of sight and within the given radius of this cow. So any sensor uh, in the green area can detect the cow. So uh, a point cow is detected by all sensors in the green area. A point cow, the black thing, is detected by all sensors in the green area. It's partially hidden by some grey objects, you know. The cow is partially hidden in terms of line of sight by the grey objects. Yeah. So I hope you're happy with that. Give me a cow. I'm going to think of it as a point. And then on this ranch, um, there's going to be a region uh, in which all sensors in that region will be able to detect the cow. And the region will be a strange shape. So isn't this exactly what you want topology for? Topology is all about shapes and strange shapes. Um, yeah. So let me continue. Um, now I'm going to just ignore this for a moment, what you see there, just ignore that. I'm going to do, I, I was playing about, let me go back to um, layer one. Okay, that's what I want to talk about. I've drawn it in red. There is a region on my ranch, I've drawn it in red rather than green, it's a region uh, and Daisy, who's I'm going to call cow one rather than Daisy, cow one is in this region and all of the sensors in that region can detect daisy. So all of those sensors in the red region can detect daisy. That's grand. 
I think that's obvious what I mean there. Okay, so it's just a, a region in the, the red region in in the ranch, and and Daisy's in there, and they're all in line of sight of Daisy, and that, that's the region in which Daisy the, the, of sensors that which can detect Daisy. Now I've drawn another thing in my layer two. This is I don't know what's a um, Mary, I suppose. Well, no, I can't have Mary. Whatever, Mavanwi. Mavanwi is cow number two, and. Mavanwi uh, can be detected by all of the sensors in the green region. Again, it's kind of line of sight. So all of the sensors in the green region can detect Mavanwi. But you see that there's an intersection, there's an overlap of a red and green region. And so the sensors in the red and green region can detect both, uh, what did I say, Daisy and Mavanwi, can detect the both cows. So. Uh, the, the sensors in the red and green region will send back to the farm the number two, we see two cows, whereas the sensors in the green region will say we detect one cow and, and the red only region will send back the message that we detect one cow. And of course there's more than two cows on this ranch, there's probably thousands, it's a Texas ranch, I'm only gonna, I'm gonna content myself with drawing three of them. So let me go to layer three, there's a, a black region, move myself out of the way, yep. Uh, which I'm calling U3, and that's the region uh, in which the sensor is going to detect the third cow, which will remain nameless. Does that, uh, any questions so far on what I'm trying to get across? This is, I'm just trying to describe the problem. I'm just throwing my notes away so that I get to, to say something. Um... I usually do this in lecture rooms with overhead projectors, so this is why I was a bit thrown uh, this morning thinking how am I going to do it on the computer, but anyway. So we've got the entire ranch. Um, let me go to layer four. Okay, layer four then. The entire ranch, which I'm going to call X, let me do this, is the union of the the regions, well in this case there are only three cows on, in, on the ranch, it's a very small example. So it's a, it could have been a Connemara farm with just three cows in this case. Um, that's the entire ranch. And what I want to do is I want to draw in a thick uh, blue pen, so blue and really thick if I can. I'm going to draw all of the intersection points. I'm going to do this because what I'm doing actually corresponds to one of the problems on the homework sheet. So I'm actually doing a homework problem for you. Um, uh, I've drawn the I've dots for all of the intersections. It reminds me a little bit about Mars and the villages on Mars. And what did we have? We had expressways on Mars. Well, I suppose I'm going to be more sophisticated uh, today. I'm going to call them edges, okay, rather than expressways, edges. So let me draw in some edges. I'm going to draw in in blue over here. Um, that edge and this edge and down here this edge and down here this edge I'm drawing in all my edges there's nothing like doing this live um, I'm trying to draw in all the edges that I see everything I want to all the edges I want to color blue I've missed some edges uh, here. Why do I want to do this? Um, Maybe I've jumped ahead of myself. Anyway, for one reason, I mean, uh, at some point I do want to do that. So I've just co coloured in everything in blue. So that's the kind of the, the farmer, um, the farmer knows where the, um, where the sensors are. 
And so the fireman knows, like any sensor in uh, this region over here, which is just red, is going to return the number. Oh, let me let me uh, do it in in a different color. Let me do it in black. Otherwise, I'm going to. Um, no, blue is is is. Yeah, blue is grand. Uh, but let me take a thinner. Any any sensor here is going to return the number. Oh, sorry, is going to return the number. Let me get this right. One, because it sees just one cow. So one. Any sensor in um, maybe I do a slightly yeah. Any sensor in um, this region here sees two colours. So it re two cows, two colours returns the number two. Uh, any sensor in this region sees one colour or one cow returns the number one. Um, in this region in the middle, uh, any sensors don't see anything, so return no cows. Return the the, the number zero. In this region here. Uh, there's just one color, so I'm going to stick a one. Um, in this region here, there are two colors, so I'm going to put a two. In this region here, there's red, green, and black, so I'm going to stick in a number three. Um, there's a number two I'm going to put there, and there's just one color visible in that region. Uh, so that's, I think I've, I've given a number to every region. So that's... Um, now, what exactly does the farmer see? I suppose what the farmer can recreate in the in you know while having a cup of tea in the farmhouse. If I'm able to do something now, I worked out how to do this. I'm gonna uh, what do I wanna do? I want to uh, tool. It is. I want to vertical space. I'm now going to create. Move this down here, right the way out of the way. Hey, isn't that clever? In the in the uh, in the lecture room, I'd actually use um, I'd use overhead transparencies. So that picture there is really well. Also, I should say that there's a zero outside because there are you know this um, you know the, these regions the, the region outside sees zero cows. That's what the farmer has. The farmer gets that information. The farmer can recreate that picture, I think, back in the farmhouse, and he has to work out how many cows are there on the ranch. Now, if the farmer didn't know any maths at all, he might just add up all the numbers. There's one cow and two cows and one cow and one cow and two cows and three. Add them all up and get a large number of cows. But, of course, cows are being counted multiple times. So now it becomes a mathematical problem. Uh, how do you produce the actual number of cows from that data? That's the problem that the, the research paper by Yuri Baryshnikov and Robert Greist is talking about. Target enumeration, cow enumeration, whatever. Any questions? Comments? Observations? Anything? Total silence. Grand. Then, if it's total silence, let me introduce some mathematics, because you don't get too far uh, without introducing some mathematics when you're looking at a mathematical problem. So, put my picture back up in case you want to see me. Um, let me go to the next page. I'll, I'll come back to this in a moment. Let me introduce uh, some some mathematical uh, ideas. So, next page. Um, in let, 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 let's use uh, blue. Uh, let's suppose we've got a union. Union is a good uh, term. So, given such a union, didn't we have a union of u1, u2, and u3? Um, so, we had x, which was the ranch, was a union of a region, which I call u1, with a region u2, and a region u3. In fact, in general, you'll have more than three cows. So let's let's do things in generality. Let's suppose we have T cows, T for Thomas. Suppose you have T cows. Uh, so suppose that X is a, is a union of T regions. Um, well, then let me introduce a concept. We, we, we can talk of a function. We say that a function
which I'm going to call W. Don't know why I'm going to call it's it's nothing to do with differential forms or omega. That's a W. Uh, it's W. It's a function from my region x to the integers. Yeah, so I'm interested in counting, target enumeration, target counting. So integers are really what I want values in. So, so we'll say that a function from x, which x is a union of regions, but from x to, to z is a weight function. That's why I'm using the word w, uh, is a weight function. This is not a standard terminology, it's just... I'm introducing it just for this lecture, so it's not a... Your average mathematician wouldn't know what a weight function is. It's something that I'm making up just to, 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 to explain the paper. It's a weight function um, if it satisfies some properties. If it is constant... on any given vertex, well that doesn't make sense at all, because yeah, there's only one point in a vertex, so clearly there's only one value for one point, so that is a bit silly. Uh, uh, but let me make something a bit more sensible. On any given edge, now that does make sense, okay, so this function w is a function from x to the integers, um, that's my region x, so you see the region there, but on any edge, any point, W for any two points on any given edge must have the same value. It's constant on any given edge. And it's going to be constant on any given field. So for any two points in a field, um, W of those two points has to have has the same value, the same integer value. On any given edge uh, and on any given... So V was village in day one, but now it's vertex. I'm getting more sophisticated. E was expressway in the first lecture. Now it's edge. And F was field, but now it's going to be face, because that's what topologists, to, to, that's the language topologists are talking. And on any given face, on any given face. Yep. Yeah. Um, so let me give you an example uh, of a weight function. Example. Um, I'll change colour to black. Example of a weight function. Um, you could define a function as follows. Given any point, little x, in my union, big X, I could define a number as follows. I could take it to be the size of, those lines there mean the size of, a certain set. What set? It could be the size of all those i's, such integers i's, such that x lies in the region u i. Yeah? Do you see that? that? That would be a weight function. For any x on my farm, any little x on my farm, or, or ranch, big x, I'm going to take w of x to be the, 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 the number of regions ui which contain x. Or, if you like, the number of colours uh, that I've used to colour in the, the point x. Okay, so... Uh, if you like, a, a more easily understandable way is equals the number of colours um, used to colour X. Yep. So that's an example of a weight function. Now, I've introduced functions... I'm going to do something else, which is, uh, again, not very standard, but I didn't come across it till a few years ago, and I, I actually saw Robert Grice give a talk on this at a conference in Münster in Germany, and I thought, oh, that's, that's great, great fun. Uh, he introduced the notion of an Euler integral. 
So let me tell you what an Euler integral is. Probably nobody else in the School of Maths knows what an Euler integral is. They're not kind of mainstream, but they, they have been around for quite some time. Uh, I don't think Euler talked about them, but anyway. Um, let me tell you what an Euler integral is. So definition. Nah, let me use black. Definition. Given a weight function, uh, which I'm going to call W, from X, which I'm going to remind myself is a union of these regions, T of them, to the integers, we define the Euler integral Yeah, that's the word that I'm explaining. Uh, so let me let me define it for you. I'm going to use the integral sign, but it is a very different meaning to what it means in calculus. Is x just a point? X is just a point. That's a good question. Not on the graph, but on the ranch. Little x is a point on the big ranch. X. Big x is a union of these regions u i, and little x is a point on the the, the ranch, the, yep, the space, whatever. Okay, um, uh, where so I'm gonna I'm gonna define this: the Euler integral over my ranch x of the weight function, and then I'll put a d chi because topologists that's not an x, that's a chi. Let me write it better. Greek letter chi because topologists use chi for Euler um, characteristic. Let me define it. It's going to be the sum over all of the vertices in my ranch. Remember, the ranch is a union, of, but I've got vertices and edges and, and, and faces. I'm going to sum over all of the vertices the value of the function on the vertex. And then I'm going to do minus the sum over all of the edges in my ranch, or the fences or whatever, the vertices of the fence posts and the edges of the, the fences, whatever, or the sum minus the sum over all the edges of the weight function of an edge. Now, what does that mean? What I mean, what do I mean by the weight function applied to an edge? I mean, take some point in the edge and let W of E be W of some point in the edge. And, and the, the condition is that any two points give the same W, so it's well-defined. Plus... The sum over all the faces of W of a face. And what do I mean by W of a face? Well, I mean by W of some point in the face. And I've said that any two points have to give the same value of W. So where V, E, F range over vertices, faces, edges. Let me do this down. Where V, E, F range over vertices, edges, faces and where I write W of F for example means just W of X where X can be any point you like in the face okay now what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate an integral an Euler integral it's got nothing to do with calculus. Well, it's it's analogous to calculus, but it, it's it's not really calculus. It's it's combinatorics or topology. So let me try to calculate the um, Euler integral of the Texas Ranch. So let me continue. I'll do it in in green. Example. Um, the Texas Ranch continued. The ranch with three cows. Okay. And what am I going to take as my weight function? I'm going to take my weight function is going to be the number of colours um, so let me write this properly. W of X is the number of colours colouring the point X. 
Uh, then what do I have? Then I just want to work out the oil integral. So I have to work out the integral over my ranch of this particular function w d chi is equal to now what do I have to do I go back uh, where am I I have to work out for every vertex I have to work out the number of colors used to color the vertex so there's a bit of work to do now um, let me go back again to my farmer's picture. I'm going to look at the number of colours used to colour a vertex. Um, I, I will, I'll do this in red. Okay, this vertex here. That vertex, uh, how many colours are colouring the vertex? Well, there are two colours colouring this region here. And there's one and there's one. So there must be two colours colouring that vertex. If you go up, you'll probably see that. Yeah, there's, it's whatever it was. It was red and uh, black. But I don't need to look at the red and black. I can work that out just from the, the, the this picture. This vertex here where my pen is hovering. Who can put in the chat? How many colours are colouring this vertex where my pen is shaking? I'm trying to shake so you see it. Two. That's two. Um, now I'm going to go to a different uh, vertex, this one here. How many colours are used to colour this vertex that I just put a, a line at? Two, somebody says. Um, this vertex here, where I just put a, a line, how many colours are used to colour that vertex? Three, and so on. So I'm going to stop asking silly questions. Uh, and I'm just going to put in all these color, the number of colors needed to color every vertex. Um, this one here is two. Um, I've done all the vertices there, haven't I? I've done all the vertices. Every vertex. No, no, there's this, these vertex. That vertex there needs um, how many colors? Two. And this vertex here again needs two. Now I've done all the colors. So. What do I need to do? I need to calculate the oil. I, I'm, I'm only a little bit of the way there. I'm trying to calculate. Where am I? The sum over all of the vertices of the value of, of W, so the number of colors. So the sum over all the vertices of the, the number of colors needed to color them. So let's have a look. How many twos do I have? I have, I'm going to do this. One, two, three. How many red twos? I have a one, two, three, four, five. I have six twos. And how many threes? I have two threes. I have six twos and two threes. So my Euler, uh, the beginning of the Euler integral, where is it gone? Uh, hang on, I, I've lost it. Where is it here? It's this term is six twos plus two threes. So the first bit then is six twos and two threes. I better go back to blue. No, I'll, I'll do it in red. It's six twos, because that was the vertices, and two threes. Minus, oh my gosh, I now have to work out the number of colours needed to colour each edge. So let me go back to my picture. Um, I'll, use, um, I'll use a different, uh, I'll use um, green, whatever, for the edges. So for this edge... Uh, here, there's only one colour used to colour it, whatever that colour was. It was black, wasn't it? That's just one colour. That edge is black. So there's one. Whereas this edge here, that I just marked now, there are two colours used to colour that edge, because if I come up to my graph, you see that there's red and black. There's two. But I don't really need to see the graph. I can do it directly. That's two. So who can tell me... This edge here that I've just put the green line to, how many colours are used to colour this edge? One. Yeah, one. Um, and we'll do it again. This edge that I've just put the line to, how many colours used to colour that edge? Two, and so on. Uh, and then I'm going to just fill in all the colours. That's a two. Um, this is a two. Um... This is a three, yeah, because it's, it's neighbouring a three. This is a three. 
this is a two this edge this curvy edge is a one this edge is a one have i colored all the edges um have i missed any edge i think i've got all the edges um no this edge down here uh is a one Have I missed any edges now? I no, yeah, I have. This edge here is a two. Uh, have I missed any edges now? Can anybody tell me in the chat or verbally? Oh, yeah, I've missed another edge down here. This edge here is a one because there's just one color needed to color it. Um, yeah, I in the middle. Am I, I, have I done the middle or not? Oh, here, right, in the middle, thank you, yeah. So this edge here is a three. No, no, is a two. That's it, am I done now? <coughs> are you happy? Is the people who said in the middle, are you happy that I'm completed now? Or, yep, okay. <coughs> so what do I have to do? I have to count, count uh, for each edge, I have to add up for each edge the, the, the number of colours. So let's do it. How many ones are there? There's one, two, three four, five, six ones, I think. Six ones. So I'll do this bit by bit. Uh, I'll do this in green. Minus six ones. And how many two edges were the edges with the label two? Um, the number of twos on the edges, there's a one, two, three, four, five, six, <coughs> seven. Uh, I have eight in my notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, why am I do doing it wrong? One, two. Uh, Graham, yeah. The edge that you missed. Uh, so you would be right in the same I I missed one, did I? Yeah, you just missed one. It's like. Have I labelled it? I just didn't count it, or. You didn't label it or change it, so... I did label it. So there's one that you that you missed. Yeah, but did I miss labelling it or did I miss counting it? Both. Both? Oh, gosh. Where is the one that I didn't put a label on? Uh, towards the middle, like towards just... just south of the middle. Just south of the middle? Yeah. Where is it? There's a two. Two. Three. Not just beneath that three. Just ah right, all right, all right. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm forcing people to speak. Thank you with my incompetence. Okay, so there are eight twos. Wow. Okay, just as well I had notes to guide me. Otherwise, I put I'd have put seven. Eight. You can see how easy it is to make a mistake in this kind of thing. Plus eight twos. Uh, eight twos. And how many threes? Um, there were some threes, weren't there? On edges. There were, um, I think it's just, is it just two threes? Two threes. Yep. Two threes. Don't know if it makes you feel seasick. It does me two threes. Plus, so now we do it for the number of faces or fields or whatever. So I just count the number of, I've already numbered those, haven't I? So there's, how many ones? There's one, two, <coughs> three, four. Four ones, is it? Four ones. And how many twos? There's one, two, three twos. And there's one three. So I'll put those down to work out this Euler integral, wherever I am. Where, where's it gone? Down here. What did it say? Four ones. Uh, no, what, what uh, blue, wasn't it? I better do it in blue. So you see what I'm doing. Uh, the field's in blue. So four ones. Plus uh, three twos, plus one three. And you work all of that out, and it comes to um, um, six twos are 12, and that's 18, minus uh, six and 16 is, um, uh, what's that, 16 and six, 22, and six is 28, plus... 4 and 6 is 10 and 3 is 13 and you come out with the answer 3 
Ha! Now the lecture, I hope, begins to make sense. I'm going to go over slightly. I'm sorry with it. With I won't go on for too long, but I'm going to have to... I won't... I promise not to do it again, but I, I, it's, it takes me longer on a, on a computer screen than <coughs> on a, in a lecture room. Can anybody guess? <coughs> a wild guess. Why do we get three? What's that three got to do with what I was talking about? Just take a wild guess. Can anybody think why we might get three? Three cows. That three seems to be three cows. So what I have to do is um <coughs> now i'm coughing but it's just coughing with excitement not with covid so i want to tell you very quickly um why <coughs> there are three cows and what i'm going to do is i'm going to i'm going to write down a theorem and then i won't bother proving the theorem not because it's uh difficult to prove it's because i've run out of time but what i will do is i will secretly prove it i'll write out the proof after the lecture okay so so um, theorem. I'm going to write down a theorem. A theorem in topology, which farmers can use, and so can um, soldiers and whoever else, anglers and you whatever. Let X be a region, a set. Now, I'm a bit vague here because I haven't done enough topology, but let X be a region in R2. R2 is our big and infinite ranch. And let X be a subset, so it's a finite ranch. Let X be a subset, be a region. <coughs> I have to be a bit more careful. I'm gonna have to say be a subspace, a subtopological space. Not planes, it's I have to say I don't have the language. So for the moment <coughs> I'm gonna use the language of ranches and regions, but later we'll talk of topological spaces on subspaces. But bear with me for the moment. Be a region with subregions <coughs> subregions. Uh I'll call them U one, U two, U three. Uh, let's suppose we've got T of them, UT, subregions. <coughs> such that X is the union of those regions. Now, I need to be a bit more precise, and I can't because I haven't told you what a region is. But, but for the moment, just let's work informally. Let W be the weight function that we've been looking at. Let, let W of X be um, the, the, the weight function that we've been looking at. So it's the size of the, 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 the set of colors to color a point. <coughs> now, let me make an assumption. Um, suppose that each region in my ranch has the same, oh my gosh, Euler characteristic. Now, um, yeah, well, now what does that mean? What's the Euler characteristic of a region? Didn't we do that? Um, uh, I talked about, a, well, I talked about the whole of Mars, but I said, you know, if you split Mars up into fields, uh, the Euler characteristic of the whole of Mars is the number of vertices minus the number of edges plus the number of faces in your given farm which in lecture one my farm was the whole of Mars but now take a region UI any region on Mars you can still split it up into fields and edges and vertices and uh, count V minus E plus F it's a topological invariant and let's suppose that for each uh, region UI we get uh, a constant number the same C uh, let me just go back I gave a proof last lecture that on Mars, the Euler characteristic of the whole of Mars is going to be um, uh, 2. Now, really, 
if you think of um if you don't think of Mars, I mean, if you think of a sheet of paper rather than the curved sheet of paper, but if you think of a sheet of paper rather than the sphere, and you do the same argument that I gave last lecture, you'll find that for any finite sheet of paper, no matter how you uh, cut it up into vertices, edges, and faces, the whole sheet with no holes in it, you'll find that it has Euler characteristic 1. It won't be 2 because you're missing the back. Um, and in fact... It's a topological invariant. If you deform a sheet of paper, we will see later in the course that it doesn't change the Euler characteristic. So now the farmer knows enough topology to know that this green region, line of sight region, well, any line of sight region of a cow is the same as you'd get by taking the piece of paper and deforming it. If you had a rubber sheet of paper, you could deform it into a line of sight region. There are no holes in a line of sight region. It's, well, come on later and we'll say it's convex, but... It's a line of sight region. It's the same as a sheet of paper. So we know that it has Euler characteristic 1. A sheet of paper will always have Euler... Uh, a finite sheet of paper will always have Euler characteristic 1. Let me come back to my theorem that I'm trying to write out. Let X be a ranch uh, made up of regions. Suppose that each region has some Euler characteristic C. Now, in our case, C is going to be 1. But it could be, in other cases, it could be 2 if you, you know... Then... Um, uh, oh, well, maybe I'm going to make uh, another, um, uh, and this number, whatever the number is, let's just insist that it's not equal to zero. Yep. Uh, then, the theorem says this, the number of regions T, the number of cows, the number of regions T is just one over the Euler characteristic of each region, which is C, it's a constant C, times the Euler integral of over the X of the weight function W d chi. Wow. So in our that's that's the that's the end of the theorem, the statement of the theorem. So in our example, uh, we had three regions, U1, U2, U3. So in our case, T was Three, but the farmer didn't know. Remember, the farmer didn't know that T was three. All the farmer knew was that he or she had this information. Yeah, or in fact, all the farmer really had was, was that information. This, this, that's all the farmer had to go with. Didn't know that there were three regions. Just had that. Uh, there were three initial regions, but I mean, there's a lot more fields than three there. But how many cows? Didn't know. But each cow corresponds to a UI. The farmer didn't know that T was 3, but what the farmer can do, can say, well, look, each UI is a line of sight region, so it's the same as a piece of paper, so it has Euler characteristic 1. So the number of cows is 1 divided by 1, which is 1, times the Euler characteristic of my weight function, which the farmer can calculate in the farmhouse, d chi. And we've calculated this, it was 3, so the number of cows is 3. So that, folks is an application of topology. I'm not going to, I mean, I am, when I switch off, I'm going to write out the proof. The proof is not difficult, uh, so I want you to read the proof. But I think for the lecture, because I've, I've gone over about two minutes, I'm going to stop the lecture, but when I upload the slides, I'll just scribble out, I've got five lines of a proof. Uh, I'm going to scribble out the five lines before I upload the, the, the slides. Are there any questions while we're still being recorded in the chat or online and then any I'll stop any questions then I'll stop recording hang on